your parliament? Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, before we broke off, you were just telling us about some of the um, ministries that were overseeing the activities of the National Assembly. I think it would be good for you just to repeat those, and then we can continue from there. Exactly. All right. I will. All right. Please go ahead. Yes, as I said, uh, the National Assembly was under the supervision of the Ministry of Justice by then. From the Minister of Justice, again, we were transferred under the Minister of Works and Communication under the leadership of Bala Gaba Jahupa, then the Minister of Works and Communication. To me, I think it was in good because the National Assembly should be an overfunction body that oversee all the executive and other institution. So if we are put under a ministry, then our portfolio, I think, is compromised. All right, thank you. Um, are you saying that um, the National Assembly, which was tasked to hold the executive into account, was actually instead being monitored and supervised by the executive. Exactly. That was what was going on by then. In your view, was this lawful or constitutional? It was unconstitutional, definitely. What was the position of the legislature in the government? Can you just describe the, the, the position um, of, that, of the legislature branch, please? That was to rectify B and scrutinize government where the need arise, taking the government into account on certain issues or matters. Yeah, not only government, but all other institutions, both private and uh, yeah, government institutions. Is it also correct that the legislature branch was um, a separate arm of government and it was independent from all other branches? Exactly. Exactly, but in the case of AI Germany, it was not like that. Please tell us how it was like. Yeah, AI Germany would do everything possible to make sure that we are under his control or under the control of certain individual ministry. So, whatever happens, he instructed instruct a minister concerned or the majority leader by then, Honorable Baba, that they would want us to ratify when did it arise? Did the executive um, succeed in undermining the independence of the National Assembly in your view? Yeah, they do. Definitely. They do. You also mentioned various instances of intimidation and harassment by the NIA. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, can you... Was there any other government agency or were there any activities that were designed to actually undermine um, your independence and also monitor your activities? Exactly. We have a case where when the IAJAME wanted to increase the salaries of ministers and uh, this point of time we were called to Pampuri Hotel for a meeting Cocos meeting, then he said to us that uh, the intention of the coming bill is that the president would want to inc increase the salary of ministers to 25,000 and their telephone allowance to 70,000. Before then, I posted a parliamentary question to the Minister of Finance concerned. By then, it was Farmer Ajata asking him whether. The government is intending to increase civil servant salary. If yes, at what percentage? The minister response was that, I mean, the budget situation as of now is very poor. They cannot increase salaries. Only 6% will be increased. Yeah. Few months later, Yaya Jame sent another bill in parliament for a supplementary, especially at the office of the president, 
We budgeted 98 million for Office of the President Biden. Within six months, that was exhausted. And I needed a supplementary bill again on that. That was why we, we wanted to reject the bill. Then, on that note, the minister happened to call Yajame on that evening to tell him that MPs are refusing to ap approve your bill. Then he said we should suspend sitting and go and meet him in State House. We did, we went to State House to meet him. And uh, when we arrived, we were seated at the cabinet room. Then we asked all journalists to go out. Security forces go out. And the GRTS, no coverage, go out. Then he started addressing us. This was insult he really was raining on us. He was insulting us. No good, no bad. Telling us, who are we? When he was taking his government, by then some of us were on our beds. Now he did what he did, wanted to improve his minister's salary, and we are saying no. If we refuse to approve this budget, tomorrow some of, some of us will be on the street filing jobs. And that being the case also, he will seek for six months without paying salaries. And uh, if anything is happening in the country, it will be the MP's responsibility, not his responsibility. Yes, that being the case, then we were threatened, and then we went back to the House of Assembly to approve the bill unanimously. Yes. Okay, Mr. Witness, can we just take a few steps back and just clarify some issues? You mentioned that there was, a, there was a supplementary bill on the table to increase the salaries of certain ministers. A budget of 98 million um, had been approved for State House or President's Office, and that had been debated yeah. within a period of six months. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay, and based on the recommendations of the then Minister, Farmarajata, the Minister of Finance in particular, um, who said that the economy was actually not in a good state. The MPs, yes. including most of the APRC MPs, um, were of the view that this was not a good move and they were not going to approve the bill. Is that correct? Correct, Council. Okay. Um, when, it was, um, when it was known or suspected that the APRC MPs we are not going to approve the bill. Um, did you mention that a meeting was called and, and by whom? Yes, Baba Job and uh, Sektijan Haider, the then minister responsible for National Assembly matters, called us at Palm Grove Hotel for a meeting to have in this uh, in-house discussion about the bill. And um, was that meeting engineered to actually influence um, the outcome of your vote at the National Assembly? Exactly, exactly. It is correct from what you said that um, when you decided that you were not going to vote for the bill, um, the minister then contacted the president and that was when he called you to State House, is that correct? That's correct. You also mentioned that after you met with the president and he threatened you with losing um, your seat in National Assembly by expelling you from the party, you basically did what he wanted and you voted the bill in despite the fact that you completely disagreed with it. Is that correct? Exactly. That was correct. Is it correct that um, he succeeded really in undermining um, the independence of the National Assembly and basically was in control of the legislature at this point. Yes, because there was uh, certain constitutional irregularities that then the National Assembly approved in 1997 that when you are expelled from your 
seat, you automatically lose your seat when you are expelled from the party. You automatically lose your seat. That was the whole problem we have then. So the MPs were afraid of losing their seats in Parliament, and that is why they agreed to whatever he wanted, whether it was good or bad for the country? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to ask you about um, other members of Parliament. It is correct that you are an elected member of Parliament. Are there any other kinds of um, members of a Parliament appointed um, at the National Assembly? Yes, uh, yeah. he has the prerogative after election to nominate certain individual in Parliament. That was what he did. The Speaker normally is nominated by the President with other female parliamentarian or males. People like Numa Satasane Boyang was nominated member. Sirif Mustafa Diba was a nominated member. Contrary Ramsey Diba Diab was a nominated member. Joe Christine was a nominated member. So uh, that's how it was. Can you um, tell us what the difference was between an elected and a nominated member of parliament? Yes, normally what I think, elected members definitely do have certain rights over nominated members because we were elected by the majority in our constituency. And nominated members don't have constituency. You are nominated by the president, single out and nominated by the president. And when it comes to voting right also, definitely we should have voting right over them. But that was not the case. During debate, during voting, nominated members also vote. And they always vote in favor of the president because he appointed them as nominated members. What was the relationship like between nominated members and the president who appointed them? Yeah, their relationship was very cordial because you have to dance to his tune. He is the one who appointed you or nominated you as a member. So you have to dance to his tune. Whatever he said, or you have to be there promoting his agenda. That was the difference and that was the, the problem we have in the house then. Is it correct that despite being a nominated member of parliament, once you became, once you were appointed to parliament, you had a duty to be independent? And did that actually happen? That's never happened. In Jawara's time, yes, it do happen. But then in the Ajami time, no. You are there to promote the Ajami agenda. Otherwise, yeah, you find yourself outside. Can you give us um, any instances where perhaps you dealt with um, foreign bodies and um, what the reaction of the government was um, to that? Yes, for instance, there was a very serious fire disaster in my constituency. About 12 houses were born into houses. I went to appeal to foreign donors for help. I approached the Taiwanese embassy in Ben and the Canadian phone and CRS. And their response was very positive. So taking this item to the constituency was a big problem for me because transport was not available then. I have to go to State House to appeal for a transport. I approached in Inspector Malafisanyan then, the government control vehicle officer, and the Musa Jamme, explained to them my problems and what and what I want I want from them. But their response was look, we have to be very careful because Hello. Hello, Mr. Witness. We can hear you. Can you proceed? Okay. He said, because some of the National Assembly members are in the habit of going to foreign agents, selling our government secret, and that doesn't go well with the president. He is very much annoyed with us. That's the time I moved out. We went to Tipagaras 
look for a private truck, hired it, and transported my items to the various constituency. Yes. Was there any particular reason why the government um, reacted like this towards uh, members of parliament? Why was the government so suspicious that members of the National um, Assembly would leak um, government information to foreign bodies? Yes, that came of the reason that uh, the crude oil saga, which Ahmad Ba addressed in parliament in those days, and there was a suspicious mind from the government that some MP might leak the information to Honorable Ahmad Ba. Why Ahmad Ba did his research very carefully, went up to Nigeria to find out about this crude oil. But yeah, Yame thought that it was his own MPs who leaked the secret to Ahmad Ba. In fact, there was a problem with Yankoba Toure. Yankoba was coming to face parliament to answer certain questions by when he was the minister of local government. Uh, I can fully remember a particular question was addressed concerning about this crude oil saga. Yankoba did say that anybody ask him about that crude oil saga, he will throw a grenade on you. Yes. Who was um, Yankoba Toure then and what was his position? He was then the Minister for Local Government and Land. Can you just repeat where he actually made the threat of um, throwing a, a grenade on anyone who asked him that particular question? No, this was made at the, not at the National Assembly, but he made it at the political bureau when we meet at the bureau. And who did he make it to? Who did he that make the threat to? All of us, all the MPs who were there, by the all the ruling MPs who were there. Do you mean the APRC MPs? The APRC MPs, yeah. So the APRC government did not actually trust its own MPs? Never, never. Um, Mr. Witness, um, unless you have something more to say, I would like to move on to the next topic, which is the March 2006 coup. But if you feel that there's anything that has been left out, please feel free to say so. No, we can go ahead. Very well, thank you. Do you remember where you were in March 2006? Yeah. A difficult moment, definitely. Yes, I was in Jarajina attending a agricultural workshop. As you know, I sat under the committee, select committee on agriculture at the Parliament House. I was also part of the select committee on education. And the select committee on Global Move, Movement for Women and Children and the Nepal Committee. We were on a tour. We spent the night at Jara Jinae Training Family Center. It was myself, Honorable Sidi Ajata, Honorable Khalifa Kambi, Honorable Musa Balde, and Honorable Ablai Jallo. So we spent the night. In the evening, we had to combos. Then, when we arrived, that was on the twenty-second. I decided to go to Jiboro to buy charcoal. Uh, on my way to Jiboro with my wife on the car. I was stopped at uh, Yundum Police Station. Then I saw one of my students there standing. I called him and asked, Adama, what is going on here? I have seen so many checkpoints here on the road. He said to me, yesterday there was a coup attempt. Don't you know that? I said, no, never. Then I drive and pass, went to Jiboro. 
I bought charcoal, came back. I was in in my home in the evening. Then my wife called me again inside the house. He said, come and see Ali Job. Ali Job is on TV talking. I say, eh, Ali? He said, yes, Ali and Farmer Rajata, Captain Farmer Rajata. Yes, no, it's Captain Farmer Rajami, not Jata, Captain Farmer Rajami. I came, saw Ali on the TV and Captain Farmer Rajami and Kamsir Jase, Omar Falketa, Bunja Dabo, Yaya Y and Dabo. Then I just moved out. I went straight to Ali Job's compound to find out what's happened. But then uh, the, 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 the mother told me that he is under arrest. He had been arrested yesterday. I said, okay. And uh, I was going uh, front and back, going to my normal business, going to assembly, coming back. Until on the 28th of March, when we were preparing to go to the provinces, Mr. to attend Mr. our regional independence celebration. I apologize for um, disrupting your testimony. Um, I need to take you a little bit back just to seek some clarification on some issues. You mentioned the different people that were paraded on TV. I would like you to repeat who they were and just tell us, you know, I mean, repeat their names and tell us who they were. In terms of the civilians, give us their positions, where they were from, and when it came to the military, um, give us their ranks and also their positions within the military. I would also like you just to elaborate on how you saw them on TV, in what state or condition um, they were in, and what impression you made after you watched that, um, uh, you know, when you watched that TV sh show. Thank you, Council. I will start with the army officers. I saw Captain Bunja Dabo, then a personal secretary to the then CDS, Burcham. And I saw Captain Yaya Y and Dabo. Yaya Y and Dabo was just newly transferred to Yundu from Farafene. I saw Captain Wasakamara. Captain Wasakamara was the head of the military police at Yundu. I saw again who else? I think um, these are the military officers. Who? Can I remind you, um, were there any other officers who came from other parts of the security service apart from the military that you saw on TV? No, the, the one I am mentioning, they are all from the military. They are all from the military. Then we have the other military officers, but these people were not private on TV. That is Captain P.J. Mendy, Captain Abdul Karim Jha, Captain Mamadou Lani Ba, former Minister of Interior. And uh, we have Second Lieutenant Farin Sanyan, explosive expert at the State House. Then we have Lance Corporal Babu Janha, Corporal, Lance Corporal Alajindi, Lance Corporal Samba Ba, the athlete of Yanko Bature, then. And uh, who else? Yes, these were the military officers. Mr. Witness, just to see clarification, the names that you have just mentioned were people that were subsequently arrested as suspected um, coup plotters. Is that correct? Exactly. These were the military officers suspected part of the coup plot. Then in the civilian side, you have myself. You have Ali Job, the former Accountant General. You have Omar Falketa. Omar Falketa is a Marabo believed to be from Tuba. You have Abdullah Yai. He's a food seller. 
businessman. You have Amadi Sow, was a caliber to the Marabo of Chelo Bari Bogal. You have Ustas Usman C. Ustas, no, you have Ali Lo, Mustafa Lo. These were at the civilized side. But then in the interim, also, we have MC Cham, was part of us. Lai Conte, the former KMC chairman, KMC chairman was part of us. And uh, you have Uncle Dia, he was also part of us. Honorable Baru Kamara, Honorable Omar Baru Kamara for Kantora district. And uh, Honorable Ramsey Adia. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Um, and these were people who were also arrested in connection to the coup, who you met later. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's just go back to the people who were actually paraded on the TV, and then later on I will come back to clarify certain names that you have mentioned um, but have not given us enough description to identify them. Um, was Tamsir Jase the director of immigration at the time? Or ex director exactly, of he was the director of immigration. Was he paraded on the TV? Yes, he was paraded also on the TV, yeah. Okay. Kindly just tell us the state of um, the people who were paraded on TV. Tell us what condition they were in and tell us what it is that they were doing or saying on the TV. Anyway, the way I saw them on TV was they were not comfortable to my own observation because you can see their shirts were rumpled and they were so weak. They, just like somebody who don't eat for two days or three days, yeah, I am with the belief that definitely they were beaten, tortured. And what did they say on TV, or what did they do? You know, on TV, what the NIA told them was, this was a mistake. Now, what we want you to do, we will bring GRTS. You confess. When you confess to the president that you, you people are false offenders, and uh, you are young, this thing is the gift of Satan. You don't need it. Maybe if you say this and apologize to the Gambian people, then the president can, for, can forgive you. This is what they told the army officers who spoke on television. Yeah. And what did the army officers do as a result of what they were told by the NIA officers? Yeah, they came, they came and do what they were assigned to do, that is to apologize to the whole nation, to talk on television, to apologize to the president, and uh, tell him that, yes, this is, uh, we are first offenders, this is our first time, it will never happen again, this was the date of Satan, yes, we are appealing for you to tamper mercy with us, that was what they said. Mr. Witness, um, after you heard this um, episode on TV, did you hear any other announcements on the radio or on the TV concerning the coup plot, who led the coup plot, and other um, either military officers or civilians who were involved in the coup plot, and any advice that was given to the public? Yes, an announcement was made on TV, on radio, that the ringleader, who happened to be then the former CDS, Colin Lucham, is at large. Let the public be aware of that. And he is heavily armed. Everybody should remain indoors. But then they are pursuing him. Wherever seen, he will be arrested. And uh, in collection of other coup plotters, they will be paraded on TV to come and confess on their statement and appeal to the president forgiveness. 
this was what said over you on television. And I believe this was said um, subsequent to you watching that uh, TV program that you just mentioned. Yes. Do you know when this announcement was made? And can you tell us also that when was this TV program was also aired? That was on the evening. It was on the evening, but then the date I will tend to forget definitely because it was a long time by yeah, my memory cannot catch it now. Yeah, that's absolutely okay. Um, let's just continue on um, with the testimony. So after you heard the announcement and you saw um, the broadcast on TV, did you continue with your normal duties at the National Assembly and tell us what happened next? Yes, I continue with my normal duties at the National Assembly. And I can say this council, 100%, that if I were involved in this coup plot, by then I was having a visa, a, a valid visa to the United Kingdom, I would have just absconded because I went up to Casamans. But then I know I was innocent. I don't commit any crime, so no need for me to go away. Oh, one day I was at the National Assembly on the 28th of March, preparing with all the National Assembly members to go and attend our regional independence celebration in Kaur. And uh, I received a visitor in the National Assembly. Then our secretary, that is Fatuba, came to call me from Churchill Bande office, the majority of the office then. Said to me, there is a lady looking for you here. I came out and meet the lady. She introduced herself to me as Fatu. She is Fatu Tabali or Fatu San Sane. I forgot the surname. And residing in Joshua. She said to me that she is looking for a job and she wants me to help her. I said to her, it's better you go to the speaker because he is our boss and he is the one who will know whether you have vacants or not in the House of Parliament there. And she said to me, okay, then what are we going to do now? I will go out. Later on, I come and go to the speaker. I said to her, okay, that's good. I returned back to the office of the majority leader, Church in Bangle. I was sitting for a while. Again, Fatuba came back to me and ask me, did you know this lady? I said to her, no, I don't know the lady. She said, the lady is an NIA agent. I said, okay. Before Fatuba stepped out of the office, he collected me and I said, them, honorable, there are men looking for you outside there. I went to meet them. They identified themselves as officers from office of the president. They said to me that I was needed at the NIA. I followed them. Then they put me in their vehicle, double pickup vehicle. We head to the NIA. Yes, at the NIA, reaching at the main gate, we met Captain Sergeant May standing with his automatic rifle AK-47 with a green signal, military infantry. He said to me whether I know him. I say yes, you are Musa Jamme, I know you very well. He say, what happened? I say, I would not know if you don't tell me. That is how he instructed the officers to proceed with me to mile two, central prison. Reaching at mile two, central prison, um, Mr. Witness, let's just um, stop for, um, for now and just um, retract a bit and just get some clarity. You mentioned that um, a certain lady came to the National Assembly looking for you under the pretext of looking for a job. Is that correct? Exactly. And when she left, you were informed by your secretary that she was indeed an NIA operative. That's true, Council. 
Okay, it later emerged that that was the fact because as soon as she left, the arresting team basically came to arrest you. Yes. Okay, and um, you suspected that the lady obviously was there to confirm your location. That was her mission and not to, to look for a job. No, no, that was her mission. She came to look whether I am I have reported to work today. So that was her mission. Can you give us a description of the lady? The lady is short and fair in complexion. She 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 seems to be a, she is just like a fuller fuller lady, but then is not. Any um, particular identification mark she had, or was there anything peculiar about her appearance? You know, the lady, it was difficult for me to identify her very well because she was putting on these, uh, what we call, Ibadu things on her head. All right, she basically was covered. Yes, I can. Yeah, the head was covered, and uh, yes, you can see the face. But then she is soft and fair in complexion. All right. How many people um, were were part of the arresting team? There were four in number, including their driver. Three officers and the driver, four. And you said they were dressed in plain clothes? Yes. Do you know if they were civilians or military personnel? No, I think these people would have been plain clothes officers from State House because they were heavily armed. Were you arrested within the premises of the National Assembly building? Inside, inside the National Assembly building, without waiving my immunity, in fact. Indeed. Um, and where was the National Assembly um, located at that time? In independent drive road, opposite Carlton Hotel. And this was just a stone's throw from the NIA building, is that correct? Exactly, exactly, yes. You said when you got to the NIA building, Musa Jame was at the gate with his AK-47 rifle. Is that correct? Yes. Can you please tell us who Musa Jame was and what his position was? Musa Jame, his, his nickname was Malia Mungu. They used to call him. He also was a close protection officer at the office of the president, for the president. Can you please just go back to the immunity that you spoke about? Um, as a National um, Assembly member, you enjoy certain privileges and immunities. Can you just explain the particular immunity that you spoke about? Please describe it to the commissioners. Yes, Council, when I say immunities, a sitting member of National Assembly, before you arrest the individual, there must be an emergency meeting call waive his immunity, after waiving his immunity, party will decide to expel or not to expel him. From there, then he will be taken for interrogation or questioning. And during the interrogation or questioning also, certain committee of the National Assembly have to be present to see whether it goes with democratic principle. But this was never done. Is it um, correct, Mr. Witness, that um, as a sitting member of parliament, um, you cannot be arrested whilst in lawful execution of your duties as a member of parliament? That is very true. So this arrest, um, how did you view the arrest? Did you view it as constitutional or lawful? That was wrongful. It was unconstitutional. And um, do you know why you, are, you were arrested? Were you told? My reason of arrest, that very, that very moment I was not told. Did you suspect why you were arrested? No, I don't suspect anything, definitely. You mentioned um, just previously that you were not part of a coup plot. The 19, I mean, the 2006 school plot, is that correct? You said you were not part of it. I was not part of it. Sorry, I will say this. There was a remark 
Musa Jamal made when I beat him at the gate of the NIA. That was, aha, you told them we will not get you. This was the remark he made. Then my mind went back to the warning I have been receiving from the NIA in those years. My stubbornness. So automatically I was thinking it's because of those days I was fighting in and out. This is the reason why I led to my arrest. And this was when the NIA attempted to interfere with um, your duties as a National Assembly member and basically try to interfere with your independence. Is that correct? Exactly. That was my thought, definitely. Would you say then that um, the reason why you were arrested was in connection to your lawful performance of your duties as a National Assembly member? Very well. And that the... Um, who plot was perhaps just a ploy to actually get you arrested? No, that was that was just a decoy. It, it was not. It was just a decoy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were arrested, and um, you said you were put in a mini. You were put in a particular vehicle. Can you just describe the vehicle that you were put in? That is a double pickup vehicle with the tinted glasses, no number plates. And uh, we drove into mile two. Did you eventually get to mile two? And if you did, what happened there? Yes. When we arrived at the main gate of mile two, uh, one officer wanted to register me before we get in. He asked for my name. That was how this officer shouted on him. Sorry for my language. He said to him, fucking open the ga gate. I am Dago from State House. So that's how the officer opened the gate. We went inside towards the conference room. Was this officer a prison officer? Yes, was a prison officer. And do you know what happens um, normally when they bring a prisoner into mile two? Do you know what the procedure is? Yes, the procedure is they have to get your details, uh, what time you came there, where you come from, what age, and all sort of things. You have to be registered first. But in my case, that was not done. And um, in your opinion, why is it important to register you and make sure that all these details are taken when you go into mile two? So that anything happened to the individual, then those arresting team or the government will be responsible or the prison authority will be very responsible. They have to explain. And is it also correct that to also identify your location and know that you are actually at the mile two prisons? Exactly. And um, you said this process basically was not complied with. They demanded that the prison officer opened the, open the gate and you headed to the reception area. What happened when you got to the reception area? Yes, when I arrived in the reception area, I saw a lot of people arrested, some shouting, screaming, others bleeding, others... No, the environment was not friendly at that time, definitely. I saw, I recognized Ramsey Adia in particular, was seriously beaten. All his back were marked with beating and other things. So... But what I came to know that definitely this thing, this thing is not going to be nice today here. Uh, can you just um, name other people that you saw there that you can remember apart from Ramsey Diab? Yes, when I was escorted from this conference room to the maximum security room number five, Sorry, Mr. Witness. Um, let's just, um, for now, can we stay at the reception area? If you cannot remember other people, that's okay. But if you can remember other people you saw at the reception area, please let us know. Okay. I was received by one military officer, one officer, Omar Kohli. We call him Jagai by nickname. And who was he? Under them, I can recognize Ramsey Adia. I saw some army officers, the like of Captain Permendi, 
Yeah, and uh, I also recognize Omar Baru Kamara, member for Kantora. I saw also MC Cham and uh, Mustafa Lu. I did so also Ali Lu and uh, Ahmad So. Ustas Usman C. And many others. Can you tell us um, who Ramzi Diab was and whether this was a male or female person? Yes, Ramzi Diab was a nominated member of parliament. He's a female serving, he was a female serving member. You said you saw her in a very bad state. She was bleeding and had wounds all over her body, on her back in particular. Is that correct? Correct, Council. Did you notice anything else um, apart from what you have just mentioned, perhaps also about her emotional state? No, I'm sure I was Biden crying, shouting on top of her voice. And uh, I have saw blood all over her body. He has blood oozing all over our body. That is how the condition I saw Ramsia. And uh, a female officer was escorting Ramsia towards the female prison wing. Before she was escorted to the female um, wing at the reception area, did it appear that she was being detained there at the reception area? Yes. Was she, she was from NIA, then brought to the reception area. When she was um, brought to the reception area, was she the only female there? Yes, I think I, I recognize only Ramsey as the female MPs there by then. Yes, I was um, more leaning towards whether she was the only female detainee in general. Yes, in connection of the 2006 coup plot. Yes, and also at that particular location at the reception area. And some he was with, no, I think I, I, I can't remember now. That's all right. Home. That's all right. And you said a female prison officer led her away. And do you know where she was being led away to? Yes, to the reminding, to the female reminding. And um, do you know whether um, at this point, Ramsey had been charged with any particular offence or whether she had come before any um, court of law? No, that was, we were just newly arrested. That was during the, those days, first arrest. Nobody was charged by then. They were just arresting people, bringing to mile two. Um, as a National Assembly member, do you know whether any detainee or prisoner can be taken to the remand wing without um, a lawful court order? No, no, I don't think so. So her detention was clearly illegal, is that correct? Illegal, yes. You mentioned um, other people, um, but just for the purposes of being brief, I would just like you just to tell us the general condition of all these other people you named, Pierre Mendy, Omar Baru, Kamara, MC Cham, Mustafa Lo, Aliu Lo, Amadisou, and Ustas um, Usman C. Just tell us in general what condition you found them in. I, I, I found them in a very terrible condition. All of them were seriously beaten from the NIA, then brought to the, uh, to the, to the prison, reminding to be detained. But immediately from your arrest, you are transported to the NIA, interrogated, beaten, or tortured, then brought back to the mile two to be detained and wait for interrogation. Next. And um, how do you know this? Um, were you a witness to this? Yes, you will see marks all over their bodies. Marks of this pipe the military used to handle or the military police used to have this plastic batting that they used to beat people with. 
you are suggesting that the marks that they bore on their bodies suggested that they were being beaten by these military batons. With all the evidence, that was caused by military beating. That was definitely caused by a beating council. Um, can you just tell us who um, the people that you just listed? Can you tell us who they were? Per Mendy, who was he? Yeah, Captain Per P. J. Mendy was the CEO at Fajara Barantin. And what about Omar Baru Kamara? Omar was a National Assembly member for Kantora, Base. MC Chan? MC was an ex-minister in the former regime. And what about Mustafa Lo? Mustafa Lo was a private citizen, but was an native to Captain Durcham. Sorry, can you repeat that? What was he to Captain Durcham? His nephew. His nephew, you mean? Nephew, I mean. Okay. And uh, secondly, Secondly, he was accused of harboring Durcham when Tam Sirjase transported Durcham from Khartoum to Farato, his home. It was Mustafa Lo who harbored Durcham there before he was transported to Kujube in the Kasamas. Okay. And what about Ali Lo? Who was he? Ali Lo was uncle to Ali Job, and Ali Lo was the one giving transport to go and be Durcham in Khartoum, in a small mosque, give him fare so that he can proceed. And I'm assuming that Alu Lo and Mustafa Lo are related, is that correct? Yes, they are all related. Okay, what about Amadiso? Who was he? Amadiso was a talib of Chairman Abdurrahman Bari Bogal. You know, they suspected Chairman Abdurrahman Bari being involved. But as far as they cannot get him, he was in Casamans. They decided to go for Amadiso in his house in this one. Okay, and this um, Marabu that you mentioned, I assume he's a religious figure. Um, can you just tell us how they suspected that he was involved and how could he have helped them in um, the outcome of the coup plot? You know, the Marabu, Marabu was a very good friend to Ayajame. I can attest to that. I know it very well. He was a very good for Ajame and I, they have done together a lot of things. All of a sudden, problem occur among, between among themselves. Chairman Abdurrahman Bari and uh, uh, Yaya Ajame, they have problem. That problem also was due to yes, Ablai, Ablai Kujabi. So this is how their, their friendship broke away. Yaya Ajame was annoyed of him, wanted to get him but have no way then during the coup plot because we were regular visitors of Chairman Abdurrahman Bari, me, Ali Job, and other soldiers. Then he, he told that we were going there for Chairman Abdurrahman Bari to help us to succeed in the coup. This is how things went. Okay, very well. Um, let's just come back to you. You were brought to mile two, proceeded to the reception area where you saw all of these people. And what happened to you in particular? Can you give us what your experience was? I was stripped naked when I arrived at the mile two central prison, at the reception, handcuffed, escorted to the maximum security wing, number five, put up in a cell there and uh, waiting for the for next step, that is to take me to the NIA for interrogation. And who escorted you um, to the maximum security, number five? And please tell us its location within the prison premises. These are three armed soldiers, heavily armed soldiers, with one prison officer who have the key, the cell key. You said you were stripped naked. Can you please explain what you mean by that? Yes, when I say naked, sorry, but then I don't mean my trousers also was stripped off, but my shirt, everything, all my belongings were taken and dumped at the, at the, at the reception center there. Yes, but then I was with my trousers. Do you know why your shirt was removed? Maybe they may suspect that I may have certain, I may carry certain things with me that might lead 
to hurt me or I may try to commit suicide have, uh, having something on me. Did you mention that you were handcuffed? Yes, I was handcuffed. And you were detained in a cell in uh, maximum security wing number five, is that correct? That's correct. When you got to your detention cell, were you, um, were the handcuffs removed? No, 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 because by what they told me was, we will come for you and take you to the NIA for interrogation. This is why they left me there with my handcuffed in the cell. So was the cell locked? Yeah, it was locked. So despite the fact that you were in a prison and the maximum security wing for that matter, and you were locked behind um, a cell, you were still handcuffed? Exactly. Okay, can you tell us what happened next? So from there, I was there until around 1.30 p.m. Um, so just came for me. Um, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Witness. Sorry to um, interrupt you once again. When did you get to Mile 2 prisons? What time? 3 p.m. Okay, you mentioned that um, you waited until 1 p.m. Can you clarify? what time it was that um, the soldiers came to get you? Yes, from 1... No, not from 1 p.m., 1.30, I said. Yeah, 1.30 in, um, in the afternoon or 1.30 in the morning, early hours of the morning? No, 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 that was in the afternoon. Was it the same day or the next day? Let me just clarify, Mr. Witness, you have told us that you came to the prison at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And you are, you are that not telling us. That was the first day. Yes, that's the first day. First day of my arrest. Yes. First day of my arrest, 3 p.m., mile two. I waited five. I was escorted to the NIA for interrogation. That was the first day. The first day you waited for two hours and at 5 p.m. in the evening yes. you were taken to NIA. Yes, exactly. Okay, before you were taken to the NIA, did you meet other detainees at the maximum security wing? I cannot, I, I saw them, but we cannot meet because it was an individual cell. Everybody is locked up with a cell. But then the way you go in, you will see them or you will see them moving around. Yes, being Can you put in the cell. That's how we recognize them. Okay, can you um, remember any of them and can you tell us their names? Yes. I was put at the last row of number five maximum security wing, number four cell. Next to me was Lanconte, the former KMC chairman. Opposite me was Ahmadi Sow. Then after Ahmadi Sow, you have Abdullah Yai. And uh, you have Omar Keita, a cell before me. You have wa wa Captain Wasa Kamara, a cell after Omar Kamara, um, Omar, Omar Keita. So this is how the road goes on. Can you tell us whether all of these people you mentioned were arrested in connection to the 2006 coup? Yes, all of them were arrested in connection of the coup. Do you know when they were arrested? Some of them were arrested early part of 21st February, 21st of March, sorry, some 24th, some 6th, others on the 23rd, yes. And you were arrested on which date? I was arrested on the 28th. So you were all arrested within that same period? Yeah, the same month. Okay. Um, can you please tell us what condition you found these detainees? You can omit the ones you've already mentioned um, at the reception area. The you condition know? of the detainees were very, very bad. They were seriously beaten. And so they were seriously tortured. Yeah, as you see, their body swollen, faces swollen. Some have broken hands. Especially Bunjadabu, I saw his hands was broken. 
Yes. What about Lanconte? Lanconte also was tortured, was beaten very seriously. And he had also been arrested in connection to the 2006 coup? Yes. Amadou Sow? Amadou Sow also was beaten and arrested in connection. And who was he, um, Amadou Sow and Lanconte? Who were they? Who was Amadou Sow? Yes, please. Amadiso was Talib with the children of Raman Bari of Bogal. Yes, you mentioned it before, actually. What about Lankonte? Okay. Lankonte was the, the former KMC chair, Mero. Mero. Okay. And um, you mentioned a National um, Assembly member, Umar Bakamara. Yes. Was he also detained? Yes. Yes, he was also detained. He was a member serving for Kantara district. Right. Um, did you mention Lang Conte or Lai Conte? Can we just clarify that point, please? Both of them were there, but then Lang was not arrested in connection of the coup. It's Lai Conte who okay. was arrested in connection of the coup. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. Do, do you know what Lang Conte was arrested in connection to? No, definitely I don't know. Definitely. Okay. So just um, tell us what happened next um, when the soldiers came to get you. Yeah, they came to collect, and collect me at my cell, maximum security number five, took me to the reception center at the prison. Yes, I bought it a, a Pajero, white Pajero truck headed to NIA Banjun. And who were these um, soldiers? Can you just describe how they appeared and if you remember any of them? Yes, the soldiers were dressed in an official uniform because their uniform were black, black. Their faces covered, mouth covered, and uh, nose, everything. So all is black, black. We call them the black boys, now known as junglers. How did they um, transport you out of the prison? I was handcuffed, then bundled and thrown in the car, and uh, certain soldiers sit beside me, escorted me with heavily armed weapons. Can you describe um, what arms they bore? Some were having uh, AK-47 automatic rifle. Some of them were having these bayonets. Some were having launchers attached to the car and uh, many things. All kind of weapons they have. Um, what were these bayonets? The bayonets, they used to stamp it with people. Is it a knife, a big knife? Yeah, it's this military daggers, knife, we call. And what about the launchers? Were they grenade launchers? Grenade launchers, yeah. They were on their jackets. Did they do anything to you whilst you were in the vehicle being transported to Banjo? Yes. They, 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 they beat me very seriously on, in the vehicle. Before we arrived at the NIA, they started torturing me inside the vehicle. Yeah, telling me, telling me all kind of words. What kind of words were they telling you? That is insulting me, telling me if you people don't want the regime of these jollas, you have to die and go to hell, but the jollas jola must rule you. So, so kind, many kind of things they were altering. And I assume you're not from the Jola tribe. Where, which tribe are you from? I am a fuller. Okay. So what happened? Um, where did they take you to? So they, they took me to the NIA. On arrival, Council allowed me to say this. I must say this because I heard of the testimony of General Alaji Martin with due respect. But then when we arrived at the NIA, entering on your right hand side is where these people, Alaji Martin and his group, were uh, drinking, alcoholic, jubilating, beating people. All kind of things. So this is why when he said to uh, council, 
is a file that he don't know, he don't recognize me. I said, yes, that must be the case because he was under the influence of alcohol the Bible. And um, who is Elijah Martin, please? Can you just clarify who you knew him? Elijah Martin is the present Inspector General of the Gambia Armed Forces. Do you know his rank? He is General, Brigadier General. He's the Brigadier General of the Armed Forces? Yes. Okay, and he's the one who testified um, in the TRRC? Yes, just recently I have of his testimony that he never touched me, he don't know me even. So, out of all those 30 people in the panels, why should I only single out Alex Martin and say he beat me? Why should I lie? What can it cost me? So, I don't think whether that was proper. Very well. You said you went into the NIA premises and you saw a group of soldiers led by Elijah Martin and you said they were drinking. Um, can you tell us what they were drinking? They were drinking this local mix alcohol, they call Sum Sum. Sum Sum. And where was this Sum Sum? Um, where, in what container was it in? It was in this 20 meter container brought from State House. And beside that also, there was sheep killed there and they were doing their barbecue, enjoying themselves. What else? Apart from drinking the alcohol, did they do anything else with it? Yes, dancing, jubilating, beating people, because I meet other victims also there. Did you mention that they poured the alcohol on their heads and all over their bodies? Exactly. When they drink for a while and you see somebody pouring the alcohol on his head, all over his body, then start running, running around, dancing. Okay, so you, you basically um, went past them and you were being led away to which location of the NIA premises? Yes, I was escorted at the reception uh, conference room at the NIA. When you enter the NIA, straight away you see the conference room there upstairs. I was escorted at the second floor there. The conference room is located, um, did you say, straight ahead when you come through the gates of the NIA? Exactly, yes. And um, is it a story building or a, a bungalow, this premises you entered in? No, it's a story building, yes. It's and on what building, floor yeah. is the conference room located on? Second floor. Second floor, yes. Okay. Can you describe how the conference room was? Yes, when I arrived, I, I, I saw many people sitting on a round conference table, sitting and waiting for me. You mentioned so earlier, when I arrive, I was, so my apologies, please proceed. When I arrived, I was seated in the middle of those investigators. They all surrounded me all over. I was given a chair to sit. Still then I was on the handcuff. And uh, a, radio, a small radio was placed under my mouth to say whatever I want to say. So they started questioning me. Before we start, um, you know, on questions about what was said or asked in the panel, can I just ask you, you mentioned that um, Elijah Martin was leading a group of soldiers who were actually drinking um, when, you passed, um, when you passed by them. Can you just tell us how you knew that the person that you saw was Elijah Martin? Council, I was a serving member of the National Assembly and uh, also do this in the State House frequently. So, government officer, government function also we met everywhere. So, we know each other very well. At the time that you saw Alaji Martin during that period in March 2006, what position did he hold? Alaji Martin was second lieutenant or lieutenant? Because then he was not putting on uniform. His singlet and his body armor, this thing he was having an AK-47 rifle. And do you know which part of the service he was in? He is from State Guard. From State Guard. 
And those are the personal bodyguards of the president, is that correct? Of the president, yes. Yes. Yeah, please um, go on and just, um, I'm just aware that um, the time is coming up, but let's just start on your testimony regarding, you know, the conference that was done in the conference room and the panel members. Just tell us who was there and um, who was sitting where and you were, and where you were positioned in the room. Yes, when I entered, I was seated in the middle of the circle because the conference center was in the form of circle, benches put around and uh, tables. So when I sit in, within them, in the middle, with handcuff, that's the time I saw for the body. It, I think then for them was the leader because the file was under him then. Who was so they did ask me. For their body was an ex NIA agent, but then was dismissed after the coup plot in 2006. They hired him again to help them in their investigation. And who else was present? I saw for their body Baba Saho. Baba Saho was also an NIA agent. He was then the external director. I saw. Botoketa, Sergeant Botoketa from the Serious Crime Unit. Sergeant Lamin Cham also from the Serious Crime Unit. Mamadou Haidara, Director of Operation NIA. Yes, and many others. Okay, very well. Um, Mr. Witness, I think I would like to perhaps um, call it a day. We will proceed with your testimony tomorrow. I would like to give an opportunity to some of the commissioners um, just to ask you a few questions um, before we um, round up for the day. But we will, we will continue tomorrow with your testimony in the morning because we are not quite finished. Thank you, Council. Uh, thank you very much, Emma, for that, Emma Council, and uh, thank you um, very much, Mr. Dem, uh, for agreeing to come to uh, testify before the Commission from, your, from where you are in the Netherlands. Commission members, do you have any questions to ask? Um, Deputy Chair, please proceed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, the first question is in relationship to Al Yujub. You said uh, when your wife asked you to come and see Al Yujub on the telly, you left immediately to go to his house. What was your relationship with Al Yujub? Thank you very much, Auntie Andele. Yeah, my relationship with Al Yujub we were tight friends, so cordial. I can fully remember during those days when I was marrying my wife, it was Ali who went for my wife from Kuloro. So when Ali also was married from Jara Pakalini, I was the one headed the at least the group to go and collect his wife from there. So our relationship was very cordial. That was since childhood. Thank you for that clarification. Now, the second one is in relationship to your job. You said because you were returned unopposed, you were obliged to treat all your constituents the same because you could not distinguish between who was your supporter and who was an opponent. But don't you think that it is the role of a National Assembly member, once you are elected into office, that you are obliged to all the constituents, whether they were your supporter or whether they were unopposed or whether they were your opposition. I would like you to clarify that point for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council. That is very true. Whether being opposition or ruling party, as a national assembly member, immediately when you take the oath of office, treat all of them equally, despite the fact they never voted for you or don't want you. 
And uh, that was how I was operating. And uh, the government never wanted that way. Because as you can remember, there are certain areas where our former president come from, Barigel. There are strong opposition of the opposition parties. But that was my strong base. And uh, those people categorically told me, we will not vote for your president. But for you, you are a bona fide citizen of this constituency. We will vote for you masslessly. So that gives me the courage also. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, any other questions um, from commissioners? If not, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Dem. And uh, we will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Council, do you have any Thank you very much, Chairman. About? Or will we just continue with him? If not, yeah, please, please go ahead. Let's hear. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have no announcements to make, except for the fact that uh, we put the ball back into your court to decide whether we call it a day or, or we uh, continue until whatever. But uh, I think uh, minds are already set to calling it a day. Uh, <laughs> you may make that that, that makes my task a lot easier uh, to do that. Uh, no, I don't have any um, a problem in calling it a, a day. And as you said earlier, when we started uh, your um, announcement on Thursday, that we, it was going to be a very interesting week, it has been a very interesting day. So don't feel embarrassed that uh, <laughs> we, we, we look early. forward to the rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Uh, we will see you all tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>